A Delvon Digital here, and we're here to talk about why I still love my M1 Mac Mini in 2023. Hey, so before we deep dive in this video, I just want to talk about one, just one regret that I had with buying the M1 Mac Mini. I bought the eight gigabyte version. I watched countless videos of other YouTubers using it and showing that it is good for video editing. It's the base model will get the job done. Yes, but there's something that they were missing. See, the thing is, is that when I started using the M1 eight gigabyte version, I started running into a whole lot of spin wheels or color wheels. I started running into crashes all kinds of different issues that I started having with it. And you know, the device playback wasn't even that great at all. And I had to use proxies. For me to get through my projects, I had to work off proxies 99.99% .99 of the time. So if you are a creator, okay, do not get the eight gigabyte model. I know there's other videos that's telling you not to, do not. Just don't buy eight gigabytes. Not worth it if you're a creator. Ah. So now that we got that out the way, let's get into the juicy stuff. I am a photographer and that is pretty much my job. And I'm also do YouTube on the side, which I'm trying to hopefully one day it becomes a job, but I definitely enjoy making content and talking with you guys. So as a photographer, editing on the 16 gigabyte model version, which I do now have, just for reference, I do have the M2 Pro with the 16 gigabyte base model one. And then I just recently upgraded my M1 eight gigabyte model to the M1 16 gigabyte model. And that was just recently. So I got rid of the eight gig. So I have no more eight gigabyte models at all in this house. So gone. But if you are gonna dibble and dabble into video, definitely upgrade and get that 16 gigabyte model. Do yourself some justice. Now, as a creator, as a YouTuber, definitely go with 16 and above. Even if you have to get the 256 base storage. So here's my solution around the storage problem. If you have the money, go ahead and opt the $200 towards the 16 gigabyte model of it. If you are a creator, a video editor, or a YouTuber, or whatever it is that you do, and you need to edit video. I mean, if you're editing footage from your phone, you probably can get away with the eight gigabyte model. But if you got like a pro level camera lenses and stuff like that, and all these different types of codecs and stuff, and color grading, you definitely want to go with the best of the best. So go ahead and get that 16 model, 16 gigabyte model actually and with the 256 storage I know that's trash too but if you got the money you can go ahead and upgrade that but if you want to take the cheaper route you can buy a dock and then the docks that you can get online now actually have m uh, m.2 drives and they also have SSD SATA drives 2.5 and you can just slap that into the dock and then you can just expand the memory and pretty much take all your projects, make sure they're saving straight to that SSD. And boom, you can put two terabytes in there, one terabyte, whatever it is that you need. And you save yourself a lot of money because buying it through Apple will be really expensive. And I would rather you take that money and buy extra RAM instead. And one of the best things about them docks is that you actually get the ports that you need in the front of your unit. So now you can put your SD cards in there or connect your camera to it directly. And you don't have to reach in the back to do anything. Everything is right there in the front. So that's a big bonus as well. So I definitely recommend that you go with the 16 gigabyte model and just work off an external hard drive. If you don't even want to get the dock, you don't really have to get the dock, but the dock makes for a better and cleaner setup because you can actually put the SD, well, the expandable storage inside the dock and everything like that. So that's why I recommend it. But that, that's my setup for both of my Macs and both of my rooms. I have a Mac in the studio right here behind me. And that's the one that's the Pro right here, the M2 Pro behind me. And in my bedroom over there, um, this door, <laughs> pretty much, I actually have the M1 16 gigabyte model in there because my wife, she'd be on some more, like you spend too much time in the studio. So I was like, okay, let me just get another Mac. And therefore I can edit some of my projects in there while she's in there so she can kind of have a visual on me. But I do want to say, if you are on the fence of getting a M1 Mac mini, I'm telling you, go ahead, get it. Apple had really shot themselves in the foot with this processor because it is still powerful today and it still gets the job done today, even with their other version now, even with the third version that comes out, it still will be worth getting the M1 chip as long as you get that 16 gigabyte model. Just don't make the mistake that I made. If you are like me, you're somebody who's trying to get something good and powerful on a budget and the price of it, you just can't beat the price, especially right now. My 16 gigabyte model one that I just got, I bought it for $603 off Amazon. That's it, $603 off Amazon. And I'm happy with it. 
definitely happy with it. I mean, I did dish out $1,200 for my M2 Pro, but you know, it's business. I, I gotta have something, you know, but if you're on a budget and you want something that's powerful, there you got it. You can't, there's nothing out here that matches that price point and that performance. So it's like a no brainer. So if you're out here looking for one in 2023, it's a go, definitely recommend it. Go get it. If you're just a creator, cause this review is about a creator. If you're a creator, do yourself justice, get an M1 Mac mini and enjoy it. That's all I got. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that sub and that like button. And, uh, I'll catch you in the next video.